back to prime time. Time now to take a closer look at the crisis along our southern border with recent headlines showing that several counties in Texas are reportedly so fed up, so much so that a handful of them are set to issue a declaration of invasion. At 3 o'clock Central Time, so right now, officials from multiple counties are holding a meeting that won't be available to the public to make announcements regarding this issue. Leading this is Kenny County Judge Tully Shannon, Shahannon, uh, who, excuse me, who issues a disaster declaration last year over the negative impacts of illegal immigration in the area. This coalition of counties is now calling on Texas Governor Greg Abbott to declare a state of emergency in his state in order to be able to take executive actions against illegal immigration in that state. Joining us live now uh, to discuss what this means are fellow Texans Rick Green, founder of the Patriot Academy, and Daniel Miller, who is the president of Texit now.org. Gentlemen, good to see both of you. Thank you for having us. Hi, Daniel. So, Rick, let's start with you. Uh, you know, just so our viewers, just to clarify, what does it mean when a county actually wants to declare an, an invasion? Well, it should have been the state declaring this a long time ago. We've known since Joe Biden took office that he was going to allow this to happen. And the millions of people that have come across the border and nearly a million that are gotaways, we don't know who they are or where they are, is a danger not only to Texas, but to the entire nation. Uh, the federal government is not doing its job under Article 4, Section 4. It's what we call the Guarantee Clause. They absolutely should be guaranteeing us to be a republic and protecting us from an invasion. They're not doing that. Therefore, the state has the right under Article 1, Section 10 to take care of this themselves. You have some people that have called on this for called for this for a long time. Two of the candidates against yeah. Greg Abbott called for it. Huff Hines and West both. You now have Kerry Lake running for governor in Arizona calling for this. These counties are basically taking it into their own hands and saying, listen, if the state's not going to de declare this an invasion and do what constitutionally we could be doing as a state, we're going to have to do it as a county. Uh, I think it's a positive step. I wish Greg Abbott would take this step, but we've been trying to get him to do it for at least a year and a half now. Yeah, I know you've been very critical of it. And as you mentioned, Carrie Lake in Arizona, that's been one of the things that she'll do on day one if elected. But Daniel, again, going back to this point, this is something that, you know, people like Rick have been very critical of been asking the governor to do for a year and a half. But why is it taking some of these counties, you know, some would argue so long to say that they're going to declare an invasion? Well, look, it's it gets to what Rick said. It, it should have been the state. And, and it's not like these counties have not been begging the state to do what the state needs to do. Look, Greg Abbott on this issue uh, makes great campaign mailers, but has been an abject failure in doing his his duties down on the border uh, because they don't want to take that that next logical step which is, uh, you know, going ahead and letting everyone know that the federal government has failed. Uh, this is an invasion by every definition of the word. June 6, 1944, 160,000 Allied troops landed on the beaches of Normandy in the greatest amphibious invasion in modern history. We're going to have that many uh, cross over the border from Mexico into Texas illegally in one month. And that number is set to double or triple uh, given what's happening with uh, Biden's policy. So uh, it is an invasion. And the fact that these counties had to have the courage and the fortitude to do what Greg Abbott and the officials in the state should have done a long time ago goes a long way to showing the divide between where the governor is on this issue and where the people of Texas are that have to deal with it every single solitary day. Let's go to that word invasion. Rick, more politicians are starting to use that very word. Do you think the tide is turning here and that this is being recognized by politicians and the media as more than just a minor crisis? And when I say media, of course, I'm talking about mainstream media. Yeah, I do, Miranda. You know, Daniel and I and others have used it for years, frankly. We've been saying this, and we were considered the crazy uh, folks for saying it. And, and now it's becoming more and more used uh, because the American people recognize it. Almost every poll you look at in terms of what's the number one issue, number one issue, uh, immigration, illegal immigration coming across the border continues to be at the top. And so the politicians are finally responding to that. Uh, but, but I think, you know, what, what Daniel's saying is exactly right. The state should have done his job here. And, and part of the reason for this 
you know, all hat, no cattle approach of, of Greg Abbott talking a good game in the campaigns and sending out the mailers and then doing very little compared to what he could do. Part of the reason is he's being advised by a lot of folks that are saying you got to follow the Supreme Court decision in the Arizona case that was taken to the Supreme Court years ago over this question of what the state can do at the border. What he should be doing is looking at Scalia's dissent in that opinion and taking an aggressive approach to say you now have a very different court. Let's do the right thing. Let them challenge it. Get it back to the Supreme Court. I think that decision would be the exact opposite today. And I think the court would say in a majority opinion what Scalia said all those years ago, that a state absolutely has the right to defend their border in this case. Do you agree with that, Daniel? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I will I will say this, you know, from from the perspective of many Texans, including our organization, uh, there is no uh, group of men, a man, a set of men, a document that should prevent our chief executive here in Texas from protecting our borders and protecting our people. Uh, at, at the end of the day, what Rick is saying is correct. But, you know, the the issue here, I think, that we're also contending with is not one so much of challenging law as much as it is uh, one of, of courage and political opportunism. Look, it's no secret that Greg Abbott has secretly been running for governor since he was attorney or running for president of the United States since he was attorney general. And and he is afraid of running afoul of, of anyone that might have a problem with anything. So he tries to cut the middle path. And here in Texas, the only thing in the middle of the road is yellow stripes and dead armadillos, right? So we're, we're under an invasion. It is within the power of the governor to do something about it. He has failed to do so. And and, and let's be honest, when it comes to the federal government, this shows yet again that there is a wide disconnect between the way Texans want to govern themselves and the way the federal government is mismanaging everything that it touches. And it's one of the reasons our movement has grown by leaps and bounds over the last five to 10 years. OK, I'm going to push back on that, Daniel. So are sure. you saying in so many words that Abbott shouldn't be the Republican choice for governor, that he isn't a MAGA candidate, if you will, because that is the number one issue that Trump ran on was border control. Look, it's it's no secret that Greg Abbott has done some things, but half measures are not going to cut it. And look, what I think about whether Greg Abbott should be the Republican nominee for governor or not is irrelevant. That choice has been made. But what I'm saying is, is that if Greg Abbott uh, wants to be the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott needs to start acting like the governor of Texas and seal the border, declare an invasion, deploy the full might of the Texas military department, and, and let's get that border shut down until this crisis is over. Does he have your support if he does not? Uh, you know, my uh, I, I will say this. Uh, I will vote how I vote in November and how I vote in November is my business. But I will tell you that we will continue to be harsh critics of Greg Abbott uh, when it comes to the border until this issue is done. Either you're the governor of Texas or you are not. All right. So uh, hey, in the fifth there. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rick. I saw you smiling there. Uh, well, I, I was I was just going to say, you know, listen, as bad as Greg Abbott has been on this, Beto O'Rourke would not only be greeting them at the border with baby formula and a bottle of water, he'd be serving them a steak dinner uh, and, 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 and much more. So there's no question that Robert Francis O'Rourke would be way worse than Abbott. So this is one of those yeah. deals where I'm going to go in and hold my nose and vote for Abbott despite how much he's done that I disagree with over the last few years. It's a binary yeah, really choice great. at this point. So, yeah, I'll be really voting great. for Abbott. Vote so it's November, a lesser of two evils. I'll be hard the whole time <laughs> to get better candidates in the future yeah. and telling everybody across the country not to vote for Abbott when he runs for president all right real quickly daniel though i just you know you got to ask as you keep seeing these we have several reporters that actually report along the border compared to you know what you find on mainstream media outlets uh, we've seen it with ben burkwam we've seen it with Arden cabillo we've seen it with oscar blue these are just three of our correspondents that regularly report on the border we see millions coming across uh, they can't keep track of all of them how long can the country last when you have millions upon millions pouring over the border. Well, you, you heard Rick say a moment ago uh, that this idea that it's the, the number one issue is true. Like here in Texas for the last 20 years, the border and immigration have continued to be the number one uh, concerns for Texas voters, right? Number one and two combined, always number one. And, and it continues to not be addressed. I mean, my first foray down to the border to see the crisis firsthand was in 2001. 
it has not gotten any better. And when you have county sheriffs and county officials stating without equivocation that the cartels are in control of the border and, and you've got absolutely no action on the state side, but worse than that, you have the federal government facilitating this issue. I think it's understandable that we're seeing issues like national divorce trend or you're seeing uh, an explosion in, in the number of Texans who are supporting a vote on Texas independence. Uh, this situation cannot last. Uh, and and it's, it's going to be really, I do believe, the next 100 years of Texas history are being written uh, right now. Rick. Yeah, no, I, I agree 100%. And, and frankly, I recommend Daniel's book. I think it lays out a very thoughtful um, discussion on this very issue. You know, Listen, federalism was dead in this country until 10 days ago. The Supreme Court has somewhat resurrected it and, uh, and started to say, yes, we should allow states to make decisions on certain things. So maybe, maybe we can get federalism back through a convention of states. I know we can get federalism back, but if we don't, I guarantee you Daniel's book's going to continue to become more popular and the Texan movement will become more popular. I'm not there yet. I still am working to try to save the whole country. But at some point, if we don't make more progress on true federalism in this country and we don't have governors that will seal the border if the feds don't, then Daniel's discussion is going to be the only one left without civil war. If that was an endorsement, I don't know what is. Uh, but real quickly, gentlemen, uh, before I let you go, so if Biden and the Democrats thought their border policies would help with Hispanic voters, because I do think this is pretty key, too, uh, they are wrong. Clearly, Biden's approval among Hispanics has now dropped almost 50 points since he began his presidency. Uh, Rick, looking at the midterms and again 2024, how devastating is this not only for the president, but his party? It's huge. I was shocked last week looking at some of these numbers, not only on this question of Biden himself, but even on the question of are you proud to be an American, uh, how much we've lost in just 10 years and how much Biden has lost in just a year, 30 point drops in some of these uh, in some of these polls. It's massive. And, and it's exactly what you just said, Miranda, these things that he thinks and that the left wing part of the, uh, the Democrat Party, I'm sorry, the entire Democrat Party is left wing. Part of what they think was going to win them Hispanic votes, they're losing. We know this. Daniel and I know yeah. this in Texas. Hispanics in Texas are not for an open border. They want the border sealed as much as anybody. They followed the law. They did it the right way. And they're sick and tired of, uh, of seeing this abused in Texas. So, yeah, I think this has been exactly the opposite for Biden. I've said this on your you know program before. I think it's going to be the same with the abortion issue, with the election issue, all, all these things that they think are winning issues for them, it's actually causing them to lose their entire base in addition to the moderates. Daniel, how much do you think this is going to cost? Again, same question to you, the president and the Democratic Party on a whole. We've seen uh, some results here when it comes to primaries, particularly in your state. But again, moving forward, what do you anticipate? Well, look, I mean, go, go through the Rio Grande Valley, talk to the Tejanos down there, uh, about all the issues they care about, and you will learn re rather quickly why President Putin pop uh, his, his approval ratings falling like a turd from a tall horse. Uh, he, his his policies, <laughs> the policies that are being promulgated by the neo Marxist party in Washington D.C. Uh, they they don't fly well with a constituency that believes. And hard work, you, you keep what you earn, and the rule of law. And, uh, you know, and that applies whether you're Hispanic, whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're like me, a, a bit of everything. Uh, you know, the, the fact <laughs> of the matter is, is that people have certain values, and they see this neo-Marxist experimentation coming out of the Washington District of Criminals. And, you know, President Puddin' Pop's not on their top five if we were on MySpace anymore. What a shocker. <laughs> President Pudding Pop. Uh, spoken like a true Texan. I love all these expressions here. Uh, it's awesome. All right, gentlemen, real quickly, before we let you go, Rec, uh, tell us quickly about the PatriotAcademy.com for our viewers that they'd like to learn more. Yeah, if you were concerned about that poll last week about how few are proud to be Americans anymore and how much patriotism is dying in America, I encourage you to go to PatriotAcademy.com. We're restoring constitutional principles and teaching people how to be good biblical citizens. And we have all kinds of programs, youth programs, constitutional defense programs, where you learn how to defend yourself with a handgun and understand the Constitution. And then you can be a Constitution coach for free and host a class in your home or your church. 13,000 coaches now, Miranda. It's all over the country. There's an awakening happening, but people have to get civic literacy back. We're in all this trouble because of civic ignorance. It's time to, re it's time to become students of freedom again.
Well, if I can memorize all those sections of law that you do, uh, sign me up. Uh, Daniel, uh, before we let you go, uh, tell us about Texit. A absolutely. Look, everyone ask yourself this question. If your state was a free, independent, self-governing nation right now and had control over its own policies, and, and you had to vote to join the union, knowing everything you know about the federal government, would you vote to join? If you wouldn't, then head to texitnow.org and find out exactly how we are restoring the right of self-government to the people of Texas. Thank you so much. Daniel Miller, Rick Green, always a pleasure. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, Thank Miranda. you. All right, coming up, what is the liberal world order that President Biden and his advisors keep talking about? We will investigate coming up next in just a moment. We'll be right back. You're watching.